Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and what I'm going to call a lessons learned video today. We're going to talk a little bit about ordering titanium and just some of the material standards to be aware of when you order titanium. Pretty sure this will apply and carry over to other materials you may order as well. But uh, really just want to share the lesson I learned on here and it cost me a pretty considerable stupid tax. And just to be clear, uh, what I mean by a stupid tax, that is when I make a mistake and it costs me a bunch of money. That's what I call a stupid tax. And in this case, I, I paid a pretty hefty one. Hadn't paid a good stupid tax like that in a while. So I guess I was, uh, guess I was due, but I'm hoping I can save you all that one at some point in the future, at least when it comes to titanium. So here's what happened. Uh, I ordered these titanium plates and it's just a pretty simple, it's a two inch by five inch titanium plate. Uh, 0.195 thick and I ordered about 40 of these from a vendor a year ago and they came in they had saw cut them you can see this is one of the ones left over from that batch they were saw cut around the edge and they came in they were nice and flat I uh, will demonstrate one of those here but they're within about two or three thou of flatness and which is good because I'm only trying to take five thou off of these to get them down to a thickness of 0 0.190 is my finish thickness so I was just taking a five thou skim cut off of one side and they were all cleaning up. They were working great for me. I went back, I ordered another batch from them and they came in and as soon as I opened the box, I immediately noticed that they were not saw cut. They are shear cut. You may be able to see that in the video. A little bit rounded on the edges and you can definitely see on the edge that those were cut with a shear. I was a little concerned when I saw that. I put them on a surface plate and looked and uh, they were definitely not very flat. I'll demo a couple of these for you, but they're anywhere from seven to 20 thou out of flat. And when you only have five thou to clean them up, obviously that is not gonna work for me. So I've got a whole box of these plates that are no longer gonna work for their intended purpose. So uh, later in the video here, I'll show you what uh, I'm gonna try to do with those to recoup my cost on them. Before we get into what I'm gonna do to recoup my cost, let's talk a little bit about, you know, hey, what happened with these standards and what are the standards for titanium that uh, I think you need to be aware of before you place an order next time. So first off, since they were saw cut the first time, I really just assumed they were going to be saw cut the next time. I had no, didn't even know what to, what to ask, right? They say that the worst thing in life that can ever happen to you is when you don't know what you don't know. And uh, yeah, I didn't know that somebody was going to shear this titanium plate. I pretty much thought it was either going to be water cut or saw cut to size and that nobody was going to try to shear something this thick because that, you know, that's a lot of pressure. Pretty uh, reasonable to expect you're going to get some warpage there. So I didn't ask them not to shear cut and that's within their tolerance. So let's talk a little bit about what are their tolerances when it comes to titanium. They have what's called ASTM B265 standards that they operate within. And, uh, and these plates being seven to 20 thou out of flat is well within their ASTM B265 standards. So that is where, you know, this is my fault, my stupid tax to pay, not the vendors. Ignorance is not an excuse for uh, not understanding what you're ordering. It is my job to look that up and understand it. So that's where I'm trying to pass this knowledge on to you so that, uh, hey, you'll be uh, a little smarter about it if you order some. So within those standards, uh, I learned that for this 0.195 thick material, it can actually be plus or minus a full 10 thou in thickness across that whole sheet when they are manufacturing it. So that means that this material could be as thin as 0.185 in thickness, meaning if I'm trying to clean it up at 0.190, even if they cut it perfectly flat, it could come in 10th hour, it could come in undersized and still be within their spec. So clearly I need to start with thicker material if I want it to finish out at 0 0.190. The other thing I learned with those standards is from a flatness perspective, they can be a full 250 thou, a full quarter inch out of flat over 36 inches on material that's 0.1875 to 0 0.250 in thickness. So that means you can have a piece of quarter inch plate, 36 inches long, and it can be a full quarter inch out of flat and be within their specs. Now, I haven't experienced that at all. I order a lot of aluminum plate in various thicknesses. And uh, from my experience, that aluminum plate comes in really, really flat. It's a, it's a pretty rigid material. It's almost always saw cut. So again, I just didn't understand that, uh, that they were gonna maybe shear cut these and be different. And I didn't understand that the, uh, the thickness could vary that much. Again, I just hadn't experienced that with material. And I think from a reality, um, on that first batch of plates that I ordered, I've, had, I've already cut many of them and they all cleaned up within that 5 thou cut. So even though they have that plus or minus 10 thou in thickness, I really don't think you're gonna find material that's gonna vary that much in thickness. 
but you do need to be aware of the standards and, uh, and understand the tolerances that they can operate within. So let me turn the camera, let's zoom in a little bit here on the surface plate. I'll show you just exactly what I experienced and the difference between the, the saw cut material and the sheared material. Quickly show you what uh, my idea is going to be for, uh, you know, what I'm going to try to use these plates for instead. And then we'll call it a wrap and, uh, and hopefully uh, this is going to save you some money in the future. So let's take a look at how flat these are or are not. So this first one I have on here, this one is one of the original saw cut pieces. And uh, to be clear, I have gone and just run the, a grinder around the edge just to make sure there's no burr so that we are sitting on the plate. And for this one, if you look, you know, I've got about a foul and a half variation here in the plate. But if I get onto the corners, I'm on this side, not able to rock this at all at the corners. So again, we get a little bit of variation in thickness by about a thou and a half. And now if I flip this over, I'm able to get about two thou, nothing there. About two thou again there. And about two thou there. So I get about two thou variation on that plate. Now if I go to one of these ones that are sheared, getting about five right there. Only getting a couple there. And we're getting more like almost nine right there. And only about one right there. So already at 9 thou, that's, uh, that's outside of my tolerance to be able to clean that up. Flip that over, get about 5. Only not much going on right there. Get up here, we're at about 6. And a couple, so definitely get more when it's on the other side. So there's one example. All right, here's one that's here's one that's got a little bit more movement. So this one getting more like thirty thou, ten there. But if I flip it over, obviously because of the bend in it, I'm only going to get about five there. Just a couple, about six or seven there, and almost nothing right there. All right, we'll check one more here. This one, we get about maybe five. Almost nothing there. Almost nothing there. And about six or seven right there. Flip that over. And we're at about 12 or 13. Seven-ish, about ten-ish, and about five or so.
Well, bottom line, as you can see from uh, our little flatness test there, that average anywhere from 7 to 10, you know, the majority of them seem to be somewhere around that 10 to 15 range. One of them all the way up to 30 thou at a flat. But uh, anything over 5 to 6 thou is beyond what I can do to clean it up, and those pieces are not going to work for me. Hence, you know, I've got a whole box of titanium pieces now that I've got to figure out what to do with. Which, that's all right. That's what hobby guys do, right? We like to get creative. So uh, I tried to have some fun with it, and I took my blades to be logo and I tried to incorporate that into a bottle opener. So I took my two B's and made that into the wings. I took my Roman numeral two and made that into the legs. And if you tune in for the next video, we're going to try cutting one of these and, and see how this turns out. Go show a little bit more of that design and fusion, go through cam and setting that up. And then we'll come down here and we'll cut a couple of these and we'll see if I can uh, sell some bottle openers and recoup some of the cost out of this and, and have a little bit of fun with it. Good learning process all around, like always. Hey, I was editing the video and realized I never went back and talked about what I did to ultimately solve the problem and end up with the material I needed for my original project. So just wanted to show you real quick, I ended up going back to that same vendor. Again, the issue with the mistake was mine, so no reason I can't go back to the same vendor. And the bottom line is, now that I have a better understanding of the standards, just had a better conversation with the vendor and was really clear in exactly what I plan to do, what I need the material to do, and that's the ultimate recommendation out of this is make sure you are sharing exactly what you want to do, what you need to accomplish, and leverage that vendor's expertise so that you can make sure that uh, they know what you need and they can make sure that what they're going to send you is going to work and deliver on what you need. So I ended up ordering quarter inch plates so they're a little thicker than what I had before and they should clean up a little bit better. Ultimately I should end up with a better product out of this even the plates that were saw cut before, they were two thou out of flat. So I probably should have been machining both sides of that piece anyway. Now I will have to machine both sides of this. I'll get it down to thickness. A little bit extra work, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. That definitely should get me back on track for that original project. So I hope you liked the video. Hopefully it'll save you some money at some point in the future. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, then great time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. For all my subscribers out there, hey, I sure appreciate you watching these videos. And uh, make sure you tune in for the next one as we're going to get back onto that Tormach 1100MX. Spend some time in Fusion. We'll finish designing this bottle opener. And we'll get down here and make some chips. Till then, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. I'll be down here working on that bottle opener. Can't wait to get that video out for you. Until then, y'all take care.